they say we're facing mass extinction. It's us that is destroying the planet. You know, we've got to face up to that guilt. And that it might already be too late. Then we fail, then we die. And this week, Extinction Rebellion, the Environmental Action Group, are holding protests in Bristol, Cardiff, Glasgow, Leeds and London. The topic of climate change is one that's often complicated and confusing. And it's also one that, I'll be honest, I used to hate talking about. But it's something we've heard a lot about lately, and that is because of these guys. I, I, I mean, I, would, I can't say I'd like to give my life. I, to be honest, I would. I mean, there's the choice between us dying today or in, in the course of trying to achieve something or dying in, say, 20, 30 years. For four months, I've been on the inside of the movement finding out what Extinction Rebellion want and how far they're prepared to go to get it. I'm Ben Zand, and this is the next episode. My time is up, my mind has stopped ticking. You've probably heard about Extinction Rebellion before. As well as the protests this week, you may also know them as the group that blocked roads across London in April this year, causing carnage. And this is the story of how they got there. Just let me take you back. Listen. It's March 2019, and I'm off to meet Roger Hallam. It's worth saying here that I've never been on a protest in a personal capacity. There's just nothing I've ever really cared enough about. But Roger is very different. He's the guy at the top of this very eco-friendly tree, a co-founder of Extinction Rebellion. Oh, we're going into, like, the most, you know, dramatic episode in human history. It's going to be quite a ride. He looks how you might imagine, a big grey beard, corduroy jacket... And Roger and the Extinction Rebellion team seem to have pretty broad aims. They want the government to tell the truth and to declare a climate emergency, making the climate the number one issue on the agenda. And they also want something called a citizen's assembly. You're saying potentially 100,000 people are kind of paying attention to this, actively involved in this in some way. Um, That's also a lot of people who have put a lot of hope in you, are potentially giving up their freedom for you, their liberty for you. I'm just presenting the research and making, personally making a decision to to resist against radical evil. If that doesn't entirely work, what, what happens essentially? Then we fail, then we die. There's no, there's no better option. What is that point? When you close down the city by sitting in the streets day after day. If you look at what the science is saying, it does seem pretty bleak. Man-made climate change is now seen as a fact amongst most respected scientists. And recent reports say we only have 11 years left to act. And because of that, Extinction Rebellion aren't messing about. Back in central London, they're on a big recruitment drive. They're planning a massive protest in April. A week-long rebellion that aims to bring London to a standstill. And the movement has attracted young activists like Sam. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. So this is the front of the hotel as we'll be approaching it. There's six doors in total. We've got these signs that everyone should put in their pocket and put on immediately when we're glued so that the security guards don't wrestle you off and and tear off your skin. 22-year-old Sam recently graduated. He's an aspiring actor, but he now works full-time for the movement. He's all in. And he's organising his first rebellion with a group of protesters gluing themselves to a hotel, hosting a conference for the fossil fuel industry. Let's go. I was so worried last night, I couldn't really get to sleep. I was like, what have I forgotten? You've done really well, mate. It's great. So you two lead on, and me and Serena will follow. Extinction Rebellion call themselves a non-violent organisation. Power to the people. But the protests are designed to cause maximum disruption. And getting arrested is usually a key part of that. Sam, it's Mike. You're under arrest, okay, at the moment. Aggravated trespassing. You've been asked to leave. You've simply been granted. And also, for criminal damage. So, do not say anything about Miami defence. Do not mention when questions are related to Lani Cool. Sam never really struck me as a troublemaker, but watching the videos of him getting arrested is a completely different story. Put your hands up, Sam. Don't touch that woman like that, Sam. Oh, 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 oh. He's going face to face with security guards and eventually the police, all for the Extinction Rebellion cause. Why? I'm going to meet him at the HQ for Extinction Rebellion to find out about his night in the cell and just to see how he's feeling about his upcoming court case. He's facing actual jail time. I'm going to plead not guilty. Yeah. They took you in 
booked you into a cell. Yeah. How long did you spend in the cell? I spent 16 hours in a cell. Yeah, that is quite a long time. Yeah, it was, re it was, re it was really long. You are in this tiny, like, meter wide space and you go slightly mad. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the image in my head is like, if you're the first time you're in there, you're like, Lock me up and throw it. <laughs> I'm ready to die. I don't know why he's Scottish. And then like yeah, three hours Scottish, later, yeah. you're like, oh, this is actually quite horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, that is that was what it, it was like? That was it. That was like <laughs> literally it. Some people do seem to want to get arrested. Well, I, but, I, understand, but, I partially understand the reasoning of to get attention to it. It is sure. better to be arrested because the media are right about it. But my, my hesitation with that is that a lot of people are quite young and impressionable. Um, right. And you know, I've spoken to a couple of people today, 16 year olds dedicated to the cause because they see it as something massively important, but it will have lifelong consequences. I think you're underestimating their intelligence. They're incredibly educated about the crisis. They've had to educate themselves because the systems in which they exist don't. But the energy and the education that they bring to this movement is totally and utterly invaluable. I mean, things like today pouring blood in a street yeah. I mean, is the government really going to care that much that some kind of paint's being poured in a yeah, road yeah, outside yeah. Downing Street? It's kind of it's kind of like what level do the act the actions need to take yeah. to actually get that yeah, level yeah, of attention? Yeah. I think you're totally right. If it was like if we were just going down to Downing Street and pouring some paint, and then we're like, right, that's it, we've solved the climate crisis, we'd be deranged. But one of the strengths of this movement is that we do it every single day, and that's that's how it's going to be until something changes. Roger is the guy pulling a lot of the strings at Extinction Rebellion. He's kind of the spiritual leader. And he's also encouraging a lot of younger people to sign up and to put themselves on the front line. And I want to know if he ever feels a little bit guilty about them getting in trouble with the police. And as I'm on my way to meet him, this is my chance. I haven't got the figures, but there's a lot of people that are pissed off. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of people that have found their own power. I suppose with a feeling something had to happen and now you, you actually have huge amounts of people here with the same kind of mindset. What, what, what does that actually feel like? Well, the main thing I'm thinking is, is it enough and will it be enough? Does Extinction Rebellion have proposals of how to achieve zero carbon emissions by 2025? No, because so, that's not our job. So what right does Extinction Rebellion have to hold it's negotiations? Not a, it's not a matter of what, what right do we well, have. Well, it is, because you, you're, you're the people kind of actually protesting on the street and bringing yeah, them yeah, to yeah. help. So let's be clear, like, Extinction Rebellion is a democratic organisation and it believes in democratic processes of society. So our role is to create the disruption to persuade the government and the nation that the next generation is going to die unless we make these radical changes. I saw a document that said that over 3,000 people are willing to get arrested. Do you feel a responsibility? You are kind of a, you know, a spiritual figure in the sense of you know, how this should be done, what the movement should do, and kind of arresting as a means to kind of achieve civil disobedience. I have been totally clear on all this, which is, to say what the facts are and then to give people the choice as adults. Like we're just a conduit, we're just like a channel for this like anger and despair, you know, and just visceral desire for people to be able to look at their children and say, I'm actually doing something here. Because if you're not prepared to sacrifice for your children, then that's a massive weight on your conscience, isn't it? What is the next step should this not achieve what you want it to achieve? We're not stopping, are we? The big moment has nearly arrived for Extinction Rebellion. Their big, week-long national protest is nearly here, and the base is full of posters, banners, and anxious faces. People do genuinely seem nervous. I mean, we're basically all geared up now towards the rebellion and April the 15th is ingrained upon everybody's mind here and you can sort of tell that everybody is feeling that as a pressure. Every location is, is uh, fundamentally difficult to, to organise due to the nature of getting thousands of people onto a road. The anxiety at the moment is, you know, we could turn up and there'll be like 15 of us there. Thousands of people have blocked roads in central London in an attempt to raise awareness about climate change. So this is the first day of the big international rebellion that Roger was talking about. This is really their moment to make the government take notice. Join us! 
join the rebellion and this week, this month, this year, this lifetime, we will be heard and we will change the fate of all humanity. By the end of the week, thousands of protesters have been arrested and every news outlet is covering them. Urgent question, Ed Miliband. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To ask the Minister to make a statement on climate action and extinction rebellion. And Swedish teenager Greta Thunberg, the girl behind the climate school strikes across Europe, spoke to thousands more. Hi. It's an honour for me to be here with you today. Um, together we are making a difference. We will never stop fighting for this planet and for ourselves, our futures, and for the futures of our children and grandchildren. Thank you. Thanks, Greta. 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 Thank you. One thing that um, really is amazing about all this, you know, I'm standing there, Greta's on stage, and there's thousands of people watching her, and it's how much the public have got behind Extinction Rebellion, and it's quite interesting, you know, I do think we live in a time where people feel quite powerless, and climate change is one of those things that we just feel like we can do nothing about. And then you have these guys literally taking over London and being proud of it, and preaching a message of love and non-violence. And I think it's a thing a lot of people kind of, you know, they've been looking for an answer and Extinction Rebellion are saying they are it. The question is, can they live up to the promise? And will anything actually change? And then, in May, the government announced the climate emergency, making the UK the first country to do so. A sign for some that Extinction Rebellion and protecting the planet is being taken seriously. That's why we're here, that's why we're fighting. <laughs> but Extinction Rebellion want more than just words. They want the government to commit to massively reducing the country's carbon emissions, which is why this week many headed to protest outside the Royal Court of Justice. I think when the law is committing our children to death, then it's completely right to, to break the law. If you want to find out more about Extinction Rebellion, check out my documentary on BBC iPlayer. And even if you don't, I could do with those sweet, sweet views, so just put it on loop playing in your kitchen, I don't mind. We'd love to know what you think about XR and their methods. Maybe you're joining in for the first time this week. Maybe you disagree with them. Let us know on email at the next episode at bbc.co.uk. Thanks to everyone who I chatted to for this podcast. And thanks to the guys here at the next episode. As always, music in this show came from BBC Introducing. This one is Walk in a Wall by Other Nature. My time is up, my mind has stopped ticking.